everybody, it's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. Today I thought I'd go through some of the bulbs that I've got in my bulb order this year and I'm specifically going to be talking about the shorter bulbs that I'm going to put in the pots and I'm going to sort of make this lovely spring tablescape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe each variety to you from what I've chosen and I'm going to tell you you know when it's likely to bloom and how tall it is so that it will give you some ideas if you haven't put your bulb order in yet of something that maybe you would like to have in your garden or in your pots now all of these bulbs that I'm going to talk about today whilst you can put them in pots you can also plant them straight out into your garden and in fact when they've finished flowering you can then let them die down naturally and then plant them into your garden so that they're there for next year so these aren't a one and done by any means these are all bulbs that I'm going to use in pots this year and then I'm going to put them in my garden so that I'll have them for years to come. I just want to apologise quickly if you can hear a distant hum. It isn't bad recording, we're just having some floors sanded at the moment and it's taking um, weeks as opposed to hours. So um, I need to just record the videos and hope that the hum isn't too distracting. Anyway, what I'm going to do is show you, you know, these are the sorts of pots that I plant into. So I use terracotta or glazed pots, but when I'm talking about a pot, I'm talking about these are the bulbs that will go in sort of pots that you can lift very easily. They're not um, particularly big. Oh, this one's got bird poo in it. Nice. <laughs> so, but they're quite small. They're maybe, I don't know, what is that? That's about eight inches deep, maybe. They don't have to be very deep because the bulbs that we're planting are actually, you know, really small. Um, apart from the tulips, and I have got a few tulip varieties that grow quite short. Um, but generally speaking, I don't know if you can see this, maybe I'll hold it up this way. Generally speaking, you know, the, the bulbs um, are really tiny. So because they're very small and you only have to plant them, you know, two or three times their depth, um, you can get away with using much shallower pots for these very small varieties. And also I think because they grow quite short, they would look really weird in like a really big pot. And in fact, I have made a mistake in the past of planting some irises in a really, like I think it must have been like at least 60 centimetres diameter, um, a really um, large pot. It was quite shallow, but the irises actually, they don't look as cute in that. They look, irises and muscari and all these types of bulbs that grow quite short look cuter, I think, in smaller pots. So that's what I go for when I'm planting um, these bulbs these days. So I'm going to start with the crocuses and Crocuses you very often see sort of scattered through the grass in the springtime and they do look really cute there and I have some in the front garden but they also look really special if you put them in pots so what I like to do when I'm buying crocus is that I will buy some, I'll buy it like maybe 50 and then I'll put 20 or 30 in pots and the rest I'll scatter in the grass and they do naturalise over time um, and then obviously the ones as I said that come from pots um, I will put in the grass when they've died down anyway. So I'm sort of getting, you know, two for one here. So although it may, say, may sound strange planting crocuses in pots, they look really cute. And because they flower quite early in the spring, actually it just brings that bit of color to your tablescape or to your patio, wherever you've put your pots. What I've tried to do with all of the bulbs I've chosen is I've tried to choose bulbs of various different spring colours, white, yellow, blues, purples, those sort of colours. There are a few pinks and I've tried to choose anything that goes in a pot this size. Um, they're all 30 centimetres or below and I think that's like 12 inches or below. Um, I may have one bulb that goes to 35 centimetres but they're pretty much all short and because I kind of like that height and I just put them in different height pots so that I get a variety but I've also tried to choose um, bulbs that flower at different times so they don't all flower in January and February which is why I've chosen so many different varieties because then what I can do is I can bring them out as they're flowering and arrange them and then as each one dies I'll be able to replace it or fades I'll be able to replace it with something else that's coming in to flower and it's really nice to do it that way and what I will do is intermingle all of these with the wallflowers that I sewed um, in previous videos and you can look at those on my channel if you like but I've sewn some wallflowers and so I'm going to have 
things like wallflowers that I'll be able to intermingle um, with all of these bulbs and they'll look really pretty and hopefully bring that splash of colour that we all desperately need um, in the spring. So what I'm going to do is put a picture up on the screen so you can see what everything looks like. So I'm sewing five crocus bulbs, I'm sewing Grand Maitre and these are a light blue, they grow to 10 centimetres, 4 inches tall and they will flower between February and March. And then I'm sewing Ruby Giant, which is like a showy purple one. These only grow to six centimetres tall, so that's like two and a half inches. So they're really quite short, but they'll look really cute in a small pot. And they'll also flower between February and March. And then I'm going to sew Joan of Arc, which is like the largest white crocus. That's again, 10 centimetres tall, four inches, and will flower between March and May. And then I'm going to sew Pickwick, which is like a silvery lilac with pink, pinky stripes. And again, 10 centimetres tall, four inches, and they will flower between March and May. And then the last one that I'm sewing um, has got a really complicated name that is hard to pronounce. <laughs> and it's an untraditional variety because it's got like these splayed pink petals and it's called Thomasinianus roseus. And that one, again, is the same height, 10 centimetres, four inches, and it will flower between February and April. So then on to the narcissi or daffodils that I'm going to be planting. I've got three varieties that are all below 30 centimetres tall. So the first one I'm saying is called Bobacodium Arctic Bells and it's like um, a hoop shape. Oh, it's hard to describe, so it's like a hoop shape. But it's got kind of white blooms and that's 15 centimetres tall, um, which is about six inches. So all my narcissi are going to flower between March and April as do most daffodils. The second one I'm sewing is called Triandus Hawera, and it's kind of like a drooping bell shape, but it's gonna have two or three flowers per stem. Um, this one's gonna to go to 20 centimeters tall, about eight inches. And then I'm going to sew Tet Deluxe, which is like a really bright yellow, double, roughly bloomed daffodil and that's 15 centimetres, six inches tall. As I said, all of these narcissi will flower uh, between March and April, hopefully. I mean, obviously it's weather dependent because everything is going to be kept outside. Then I'm going to be sewing three iris. So the first one is called Blue Planet and it's a pastely blue colour, will grow to 15 centimetres tall, six inches. And this one's going to flower really early, hopefully between January and March. Then I'm going to sew Sensational. Again, this one will hopefully flower between January and March, quite early. And this is like a, the fragrant classic purple with the orange stripe, 15 centimeters tall, six inches. And then the last one I'm sewing is called Harmony. And it's kind of like a deep velvety blue with a white flecked tongue and a clear yellow line down the petal. And again, that's 50 centimetres tall, six inches. This one's going to flower a little bit later between February and March. Then I'm onto the tulips that I'm sewing. And these are larger bulbs, so you will need, um, you know, even though they're shorter tulips, you'll still need a larger pot than you would use for the other smaller bulbs, because you do need to be able to plant it two to three times its depth in the compost. Um, and obviously each bulb is going to take up more room. So you will need something a little bit bigger. So for the tulips, I'm sewing five varieties. I'm sewing one called Early Harvest. And this is like, oh, it's kind of spectacular actually. It's got like a, an outer of mandarin red and an inner with like, that's a deep yellow. And this one will flower in March, hopefully, 20 centimetres tall, eight inches. And then I'm saying Purple Prince, which is your classic purpley mauve colour, and it'll flower between March and April. And it's gonna be 25 centimetres tall, 10 inches. And then I'm saying one called Portland, which is like this lovely purple and red colour. And that will be taller at 30 centimetres, but I think that's still a perfect height for a pot and will again flower between March and April. And then I'm sewing one called Night Club, which kind of is not my normal um, colour scheme because it's like a hot neon pink, but I was really attracted to the picture and I just had to have it. So I'm going to try a hot neon pink in my arrangement. And it, this one also apparently has two or more blooms per stem. So 
that'll be kind of fun. And I have to say that this one is 40 centimetres tall, actually. So this is one of the tallest things that I'm going to plant and it will flower the latest. So it's probably going to flower along with my other bigger tulip pots, but I am going to put it hopefully as part of my tablescape. Um, it's going to flower between April and May. And then the last tulip that I'm sowing is called Princess Irene Parrot. I just love parrot tulips. I don't know why. Anyway, this is like a really vibrant orange and it's streaked with like mauve and green. It's just gorgeous. So this one's 40 centimetres tall, about 16 inches. And again, will flower between April and May. Then we move on to the muscari. I can't tell you how much I love muscari. I think these are also called grape hyacinths, um, but I know them as muscari. So I'm sowing three muscari and these are really cute. So I'm sowing grape ice, which is like a two-toned deep purple with some white. And this one will grow to 15 centimetres tall, six inches, and flower between April and May. In fact, I think all muscari flower between April and May. And the other thing to know about muscari is that they are fragrant. So a lot of narcissi, daffodils, and muscari are fragrant, which is kind of fun. The next one I'm sowing is called Pink Sunrise, and this is a lovely pale pink colour, and will grow to 20 centimetres tall, 8 inches. And then the last one I'm sowing is called Baby's Breath, which is this gorgeous soft baby blue. And I'm really looking forward to this one because it's, it's apparently grows to 30 centimetres tall, which is unusual. It's about 12 inches. Uh, that's unusual for Mascari, I think. They're not normally as tall as that. So let's see whether it makes it to that height. <laughs> So I've got just a few more that I'm going to be sowing. Um, I've got two skilla. Um, I've got the Siberica alba, which is this kind of tiny, small white skilla, um, and it grows to 10 centimetres tall, four inches. This one will flower between January and March, so it'll be something lovely to look forward to, you know, right as, the, as we get into winter. And then I'm sowing another one that I just don't know how to pronounce the name of, but it is a large, light, bluey white, um, skilla and it's got like this dark midrib to it. It grows to 30 centimetres tall. Again, will flower between January and March and I'm going to try and pronounce it and it's called Mishdenkoana. Mishdishten... I have no idea. If anyone knows how to pronounce that, do let me know. Um, I, why would you make up a name that's so complicated to pronounce? I think we should abbreviate it, just call it Koana. So the last two I'm sowing are a little bit different. So I'm sowing like a mix of um, a bulb called Iphion. I think that's how you pronounce it. But they're also known as the spring star flower just because of their shape, I guess. And they're super hardy. And it's going to come in shades of white and blue and violet and has like a deep purple vein running through it. They grow to 25 centimetres tall and will flower between March and May. And then the last one I'm sowing, I think is pronounced Tritelia hyacinthina something like that anyway it's a lovely bulb that's native to north america and it's a summer perennial herb and it looks a little bit like um i'd say like a, a garlic head or a little bit like an allium it's got these lovely white long blooms but apparently they last really well as cut flowers so i have 50 of these bulbs and i may plant some in a pot and then some in like a patch somewhere so that I can cut them um, because they grow to 40 centimetres tall, 16 inches, and they will flower in June. And I'm a little bit worried I don't have anything else on my tablescape that's flowering in June, but I do think it will be a nice pot to have on the patio along with all my other patio pots. So I'm definitely going to sow that one um, in a pot. And then, as I said, just a few in a patch so I can cut them um, if they if they last well as cut flowers, I have not sown those before. I've never had them in my garden, so I'm looking forward to that. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at the bulbs that I'm going to be putting in pots on my tablescape for the spring. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see how I plant them, I'll be doing another video about that and, you know, what goes into planting the bulbs. It's not very complicated, but I thought I'd show you because some people worry about, you know, do you need drainage? Do you leave them out in the cold? So I'll go through all of that in another video um, very soon. And then if you want to see what um, they look like when they come into flower and how my tablescape looks or my patio looks next year, then do subscribe to my channel because I will definitely film that and post it here on this channel. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.